our teaching and study today is coming from our beloved Portia, dated November 12, 1989. And it's on cosmic justice. And Portia says, I hold up the scales before you. Beloved sons and daughters of cosmic justice, I come bearing in my right hand that sword of divine justice, and in my left, the scales. But I am also the many-armed goddess, and in all my other hands, I bear messages of divine direction, assistance from the Lords of Commerce. I bear letters for every light bearer upon earth, every true friend of freedom, and all whom we have known and sponsored, every single life stream who has ever been sponsored by an angel or an ascended master. Therefore, millions shall receive these letters this night, and I will carry them that they might be charged at this altar with the light of God and your love and holy purpose. I bear them for some or for a final message and a final opportunity, not because there is finality to their life stream, but simply because the time and the space are running out when choices can be made in this decade and in the next. So as our beloved Portia has given us a heads up, that as we continue to do our work here on planet Terra, we need to be responsible for the things that are going on in our world, that we need to be able to balance the light that we are causing to be unbalanced, that as we are weighed on the scales of justice, that the light that we are given by the Almighty each day as we rise up and begin our work, we're given this opportunity to balance it. I know that we're supposed to, you know, we're told that, you know, you balance in 51%, but they have also shared with us that you can balance more than 51% in any given day. That way you're able to have that light for whenever you need to call it forth and to be able to use it. So as we receive that light and that information, that these letters that are being written and carried to be blessed in order for us to be able to move forward on some of the things, as they say, it's not for the finality of a lifetime, but it's for as you move forward, you, you know, and given another lifetime to be able to come back and balance that karma that we might run short on. Because once we have moved forward and not balanced things accordingly, sometime, as they say, you know, your card get called in and you have to move forward in your transition called death. And as Portia goes on to say, it is well to listen to my beloved Saint Germain. For what he does tell you is that you must understand those in embodiment and those ascended are subject to certain limitation. And there is something that not all are able to deal with or to accept. For you know the limitlessness of your mighty I am presence, or you think you do. You know the infinite power of God, or you think you do, or we think we do. But then you wonder why God does not step forth and prevent the death of a child or the calamity, which the I am presence does not step forth to intercede. 
and it's all in due reason of our free will that we have. That if we don't relinquish that call and ask the Almighty to step in, they allow us to move forward on what's going on in our lives. Because we have to give that permission simply because we have that free will. You begin to understand their limitation as above, so below. And these limitations are built in. That as the Father has given us this opportunity to be in charge of our karma here on planet Earth, that we are given the opportunity to work and balance out our karma. That as we are weighed in the great balance of perfection, we must not and need not be found wanting. Portia remind us that it is the law, beloved. It is the cosmic law. It is the karmic law. It is the law of each individual manifestation of God. That as we are manifesting and representing God here on planet Earth, He's given us that opportunity. We often read in the Bible and in our teaching, it tells us that ye are God's. You are given this opportunity to know your worth. Because as you go in and are weighed, and once you make that transition, you are weighed in the great balance of perfection, and we must not be found wanting. Therefore, the Lord's are come are bound by that law and may not intercede. When an individual free will or, no, or karma dictates that the lesson of life must be learned in a certain manner, for some time it is the case that the one has been given a thousand or 10,000 or a million opportunity to learn by a teaching of the Buddha, to learn by the love of the mother, and in the face of that teaching and that love, one has refused to bend the knee before his own God presence or to obey the law. The law had no bite. If you are continuously, continually given opportunities after opportunities and you don't learn anything from those failures that you have, then there's an action that kind of shows that you don't believe the law has any bites. So in a, for that reason, we have to experience death and the different things that happen in our lives. It might not be death. It might be some other form of limitation. And therefore, when all attempts, attempts to teach that these means have been exhausted, it does become necessary to allow some to experience loss and grief and pain. And thereby in those experience, they may learn the higher way and the higher walk. There comes a time when a person free will must be their only God. When their karma is the only law that they can be, that can be applied. And when mercy has been exhausted, when those examples of the great avatar have come again and again, and their words have not been heeded, nor their example followed. So then you understand, beloved, that there does come a time when intercession is no longer possible. This law affects all peoples at the time of their passing. Life can no longer be extended for they have lived out the allotment for this embodiment, given to them according to the law of grace and mercy balanced by the law of their own karma. And therefore, sometimes, somewhere, opportunities in this octave come to a close, even though the individual may not have balanced 51% of his or her karma. I ask you to begin to understand that though some people think 
that they are in control of their lives, their future, their nation, or their destiny. This concept lasts only until that force of karma, known as a car juggernaut, does descend. For in that hour and that moment, the clock does strike for them. And we know how it is that we used to experience things. It took a little longer for the karma that we had sent out to get back to us. But now things return right back to us in a hurry. And the first thing that we'll say is that, oh, I didn't see that coming. But guess what? That's what happened when we have to balance that karma. Thus, beloved, you have worked with the, then a framework of the realms of possibles. And as I have always in the heart of my beloved Francis, spoke of that in Washington, D.C., in the hour of the downing of the Korea airliner, moving in the realms of possible, you have learned to become a realist as I have. Remember with me then how I finally had to withdraw from the courts of Europe, from the King of France. There was nothing more that could be done. The French Revolution was upon the people. I withdrew, beloved, and made my way to India. As I was there overshadowing St. Germain and the moment, beloved, for all the efforts that he had made, I truly could not be anywhere but one with him. Our beloved Portia shares with us that they did uh, go to focus of the great divine director, dare to consider what might be done in the remainder of this century. Their great hope at that time was to initiate the spiritual path of the I am that I am in America. Thus, you know this story. You know the coming of the law. You know the coming of the violet flame and how much has been accomplished for the world freedom and world transportation through the dynamic decrees of the student. But beloved, it comes down to leadership. The leadership of a nation has determined the course of event. Though many have been enlightened as to the political realities, though many have known what should have been done and what could have been done, those who've been in position of power and have not acted. Beloved, they have had a full century to prepare for this hour in many thousands of years of experience. In the page of history that have written their deeds and past embodiments. Portia say, I say to you, beloved, understand the limits and the constraints that we are under and that you are under. For as each one of you at the time of another has profoundly desired to be in a key position and to make right decision for your nation and for your people, you have realized that though perhaps that karma was adequate you simply were not in a position to be moved in St. Germain chessboard to be at the right place at the right time. Have you thought then of another day, another stage of life, another opportunity? If you have thought into the future, as we have always thinking into the future, beloved, you should come to the realization that if and when you present to St. Germain and to me and to the Lords of the Comma that possibility, of having balance your chakra, your four lower bodies in alignment and karma almost completely balanced, yet retaining the option of the physical embodiment, perhaps returning again, then you would balance 51% of your karma. And you may be in a position where there are no limitation of karmic law. In your case, no limitation and your ability to focus the God flame, where all these things might work together so that the dream of your heart, the prayers of your heart, and the will of your heart might focus on that moment when you could once again be in a position to execute right decision, crucial to the destiny of a nation. So as our beloved 
Portia is sharing with us. It is our opportunity now to be able to stand up and be appointed in those direction. Be appointed in our political bodies to be able to make those calls and make the changes because we have given this opportunity time and time again to stand and still stand. But most of the time, the first thing that we look at is in, and figure that this is not something that we can do. But there's a lot that we can do, beloved. We can get out and do the work that is given to us to do whatever the masters have set forth on our plate. The opportunity to go in and be a part of our nation, the direction as to which way our nation is going. We're given that opportunity with our calls and with our blessing, that we are able to make those prayers and application at night before we go to sleep, during today as we are sitting idly by. This is the opportunity that the Almighty has given you. So you are being afforded this opportunity once again. Beloved ones, if you simply imagine a change of leadership, an exchange of certain individuals who are already in politics today, who know exactly what should be done for those office holders who do not do, know exactly what should be done, you can realize that there are enough capable people in the world who would have made and still make a difference while there's time and all of the right decision to bring the nation to that moment when it would never, never be possible again for the Soviet Union or any other power to initiate nuclear war or any kind of war. This was the intention of Saint Germain and me, says Portia. This was our goal, beloved, to see America become the place prepared for the great gathering of the souls of the elect from the four winds, those who would guarantee the peace of the world, the freedom of the world, and the enlightenment of the world. But alas, America cannot even educate their children to reach the academic levels that are necessary in order for them to be able to run their own civilization. They have lost that spark and the verb. In other words, the vigor and the spirit, beloved, because they have lost that spine and the nerve. So our beloved Portia is saying that we have lost a step. We have lost the direction of which way we should be going. We know one of the things that is, has compounded us and compounded us with problems as we stand today, and that's with the, the COVID-19. Our children cannot go into their schools and be educated as they were before, not only in schools, but in colleges and every place else due to the things that are happening in our world. We need to step forward and step into the light and be bound by that host, that host that our beloved Saint Germain, that they are calling forth in this hour and calling forth to each and every heart flame. Now we look into this dictation that was delivered by Elizabeth Clare Prophet in October 8, 1989, on a Sunday evening. And in reading this pearl, it was as if we had fast forwarded at this day and time. I mean, we, you, you, know, you can insert and draw your own conclusion of what the masters are talking about. But our beloved Portia and St. Germain want us to have capable people in the political office. They want us to see America become prepared for the great gathering of souls, of the elect of the four winds. So whichever way things are drawn and people of a nation are drawn to America, they want you to be able to have the best and the brightest of that nation for this nation, for us to continue to move forward in that light and in the love of God, that we're able to walk and be guided with that light. 
those who would guarantee peace in the world of freedom and the world of enlightenment of the world. Portia told us in 1989 that we have lost that spark, that vigor and spirit. We have lost our spine. These are not my words, but our beloved Portia. We have to step up our game, beloved sisters and brothers. Therefore, we see the sign posted in the other octaves everywhere on the street corners of America and behind the scenes in other places. What might have been, what might have been, they say. I do not choose to prolong this, beloved, but only to say long enough that you might understand that violet flame is needed if there is to come a time when a rebuilding may occur on the very same planet, on the very same soil. The record of infamy and betrayal of the flame of freedom by the fallen one must be erased. Therefore, if all you can do is invoke the violet flame, beloved, you will be rendering a cosmic service for the future generation who came after you, who come after you. But I know that this is not all you will do, for you have truly taken up the sword of Archangel Michael and to our great joy. I, Portia, come to you in this hour, for I must also hold up the scales before you, each one of you. My angels stand before you, and there are few among you whose scales are not tipped. Therefore, what would I like to see first is a scale balance, that you have approached the balance of 50% of your karma. And then I would like to see those scales tipped on the side of light. As many of you will observe, your scales are still tipped on the side of greater percentage of karma. So the master is kind of telling us that we have some work to do in order to balance the returning karma that we receive each and every day. So we have to be, begin to start doing the work of balancing our karma each and every day. Beloved, it is not good and we desire to see it change. You are on that straight and narrow to bring about that change, let it be so. Let it be understood that karma is transmuted by using the violet flame invocation and the balancing of karma is accelerated by your daily service to life. Service without violet flame, beloved, avails much, but not enough and vice versa. It is impossible, I say, nearly impossible. Therefore, for there to be an adept and there and on the, on, there on the planet may achieve it, but none should assume that to be our posture, to balance 51% of your karma in this short lifespan and to make your ascension without the daily use of the violet flame. So in other words, the masters don't want us to take that no can do attitude. We must have an attitude of being able to and knowing that we can do the work. But they're asking us to use the violet flame and the violet flame mantra in order to build up that light, build up what it is that we need to do in order to balance that 51% of our common. We have said it before, but some Somehow this is the one thing that does not get through to the student who need it most. And therefore, at least you weary the messenger voice. In other words, you're getting tired of the messenger voice. So Portia says, I come to tell you that it is the most essential that you do not neglect your calls using the violet flame and that your violet flame mantra take priority after your tubal light and your protection will be set. But they're saying it are set. Mother Mary has always taught us to be in tune with God at all time, because you don't know when you will need 
that energy. If you are not in tune with God at all times, how can we act? How can he act in time of danger or crisis or opposition? I would like to share with you some of the opposition uh, based on myself and what I had experienced. That is some of the best ways that I can show, let you know of some of the opposition that are out in the world. And I'm sure that many of you have your own opposition that you have dealt with. One day as I was on my way home from work, I was traveling north on a particular street. And as I was traveling north, we came to this light and there was about 10 cars in front of me and a couple that was behind me. And as we was driving, coming north as the light, once the light changed, um, there was an officer sitting off over on the right hand side up about six cars up from where I was already had stopped for the light that was ahead of us. And as I was, all the cars took off and proceeded going north, we made it through the light and all of the cars and there was still two cars behind me. The officer came out of his city, of her sitting spot and bypassed the two cars behind me and pulled me over. And she says, uh, may I see your license? And I complied, I gave her my license. And she looked at my license and she asked me, say, um, didn't you see me sitting there wanting to get out? And I says, yes, I saw you. I said, but there was also 10 cars in front of me and no one stopped or slowed up to let you out. And I wanted to proceed on and asking her, why did you stop me to ask me, why didn't I let you out when you had 10 more ahead of me that didn't even comply? But yet and still they went on. She looked at my license, ran my license, said, oh, I see you haven't had a, a ticket in 25 years. I said, well, no, you know, I have a CDL. And with a CDL, you can't afford to get tickets because then they suspend your license. And then my livelihood is over for a minute. But anyway, the opposition of things was is that if I had fallen into that fray of getting on the defense of all the things as I first started, that opposition would have grown stronger and uh, everything would go, would have turned in a different direction. As we go on to our beloved Portia says, it's always good to create with your decrees a mighty braid of the violet flame, blue rays by making every other decree a blue and a violet flame. This is not possible when you are engaged in a battle against the forces of darkness and you need the power of Elohim at your command through the giving of the decrees. But it is possible at times, at other times, when you celebrate your victory. So you are able to celebrate your victory when you are given an understanding in order to work with your calls, your violet flame calls, and your protection that we are taught to make each and every morning and each and every day when we are encountering oppositions in our lives. We're encountering those opposition according to that light. God wants us to be able to, the masters want us to be able to have this in our hip pocket, so to speak, so that as we need it, it's there. And our beloved Portia goes on to say, my heart is the heart of the mother. I am the mother's side of St. Germain, your father and your friend and brother, and I am the mother's heart, having been so long ascended in octaves of light, does yearn to see and know the so true soul's liberation and freedom whereby you might go forth to rescue your twin flame and those in your mandala that might be in the quadrant of matter does yearn to see you attain, you attain to that mastery, whereby you would know the joy of being an ascended master, student in embodiment. And you don't take till the end of your life to finish your toil and spread 
that joy. Beloved, this is a joyous path. It become more joyous by the hour and by the year. And as you definitely become lighter and lighter, as you establish that inner peace and strength and balance that enable you to look out from the center of your being and be calm in all direction and be unmoved. So as we are given our teaching and our light, I would like for you to share with me in this meditation of how uh, we're given this meditation of I am the light of the heart that we are able to focus on in all direction as that light is emanated from us and out into the world. So please join me in giving this meditation of I am the light of the heart together. I am the light of the heart, shining in darkness of being and changing all into the golden treasures of the mind of Christ. I am projecting my love out into the world to erase all errors and to break down all barriers. I am the power of infinite love, amplifying itself until it is victorious, world without end. I am the light of the heart, shining in the darkness of being and changing all into the golden treasure of the mind of Christ. I am projecting my love out into the world to erase all errors and to break down all barriers. I am the power of infinite love, amplifying itself until it is victorious, world without end. I am the light of the heart, shining in the darkness of being and changing all into the golden treasures of the mind of Christ. I am projecting my love out into the world to erase all errors and to break down all barriers. I am the power of infinite love, amplifying itself until it is victorious, world without end. Our beloved Portia goes on to say, life can be joy, beloved, each and every day, and you can know that joy, so you can take less than an entire night to clear the attack on the planet of a single day. You may have time to enjoy yourselves in the, those things that pleases you and that develop the sensitivity of the soul to the art and music and culture. In the life of the disciple, it is not time. You don't have time to stop when you are in a battle. You cannot run back to the line and say that you have to put on your armor of God. You have to be ready for your enemy's attack, for whatever opposition that is coming forth in your life, whatever is moving forward that's blocking your path. God has given you the opportunity with the teaching and the wisdom that our beloved Portia is sharing with you, with that light, with your volleyed flame and your blue flame teaching that you are able to walk forward and be in charge of your light and love. Understand, beloved, we are engaged in a war for the victory of the light. Yet greater the mastery you attain, the quicker you can see the taking of these forces by your fiat of the host of the Lord. And then you realize that some portion of that day can be devoted to doing some of the, your most favorite thing. I understand the heart of the child. I understand the heart of those moving on in years, those in their teens who look forward to life and a future that now appears uncertain and perhaps limited. Blessed one, I tell you, indeed the future is what you make it. Be absolutely convinced and have that absolute God conviction that you shall carve out your future. You shall carve out your destiny. No matter what age, what your age, this lifespan is not a permanent limitation and you will break the shell of that limited egg and you will come peeping through and you will soar to the sun. I know it, beloved, because I see your destiny, says our beloved Portia. I am Portia, goddess of justice. Seek justice early, seek it at noon, Seek it at evening tide. 
come to cherish justice as the daily balancing of your scales. Our beloved Portia goes on to tell us that my angels have shown you on this scale the comic measurement of a lifetime. But there is a scale that measures the accomplishment of each day and you can call upon my angel of cosmic justice to weigh in the day of allotment of karma, what would balance and what was not, as well as the light potion of the result of his positive or negative qualification. And you can retire each night, knowing as you heed, as you lay your head upon your pillow, that the bundle of karma that was given to you at dawn by the angel who represent the comic board is finished. This is satisfaction, true satisfaction, beloved. And therefore, if you really desire to know whether or not you have finished the day's work, the karma that has been due for balance on that day must be either paid in full or it will occur to the outer karma, karmic weight of your life stream as an old age, disease, and death. My angels with you together in your holy Christ self will show you these scales so you can see for yourself. They are balanced, and if not, just how far out of balance they are. Our beloved, sometimes the scales may be heavier on the light side than on the dark side. And therefore you can know that on that day you have earned more good karma than the 100% requirement for the balancing of that day karma. And therefore you have not only earned good karma, but you have also increased your light and your attainment. This pure energy qualified by good deeds as well as good decrees offers above and beyond the call of duty. It's like money in the bank. You can spend it on transmuting the karma of past records before they come due, or you can save it in your account for future emergencies. In other words, by walking that extra mile, you can now have added light in your reservoir and the satisfaction of knowing that you can accomplish every day more than merely keeping that darkness at equilibrium. You can get ahead. So at our equilibrium is the state is which is opposing forces, influences of balance. So we're looking forward to balancing uh, those flames each and every day, that light that the Almighty has given us as they are able to weigh and let us know what scales there and how much we have balanced. We are thankful for uh, our beloved Portia for giving us that opportunity and that wisdom to know that we're able to see and ask for this to be granted to us to have that knowledge so we'll know which way that we need to continue working. This pure qualification by good deeds as well as good decrees offered above beyond the call of duty is like money in the bank. That is the great thing that we need to have is our money in the bank. Because there are days that we don't get around to making all those necessary calls, all of those flames that we need to put out in front in order to put out those fires that are burning and the karma that is returning. This is also a great joy, beloved, as the messenger is daily shown the monitoring of our own level of karma or non-karma by the angels of records. She has also been shown that in striving, one can indeed balance more than 100% of one's karma. Beloved one, this messenger has not had time to contemplate the meaning of that measure, but I will tell you what it is. When you go beyond the 100% level, then you are increasing the rings of your causal body and the light thereof. You are increasing your level of attainment and your level of influence for your world's goodwill. So as our casual body that is around us with that light, we want to be able to have that balance that as our casual body is with us indefinitely, we want to be able to illuminate 
it and continue to have that flame manifesting within us uh, and around us that as we uh, have our incarnation again and again that we're able to have that ring around us that we are uh, protected and guided that as we go forth in light and in love therefore never mind being in the service of the Lord for the gain is always there Positive karma sent forth does return to the one who has sent it, enriching and enliving the souls in creating a longer lifespan where one may perform greater service to life. May you rejoice, may you also rejoice that on many days, many of you balancing more than the karma of the day and much more, and thus do make strides. I portion. In the flame of living justice, therefore, commend you to that justice. For the name of justice is the divine resolution, not divine retribution. That resolution, beloved, must come. From that point of balance in the psyche, that balance of the right hand and on the left, the balance of love and of wisdom, to live in such balance centered in the heart of Lord Gautama, Truly is the peace on earth, goodwill to man. Truly is the bliss of oneness. May you now contemplate yourself one with Lord Gautama, the Bodhisattva, Maitreya, and Manjurthi, attending the lords of the world to his right and to his left. And may you now step into the merge with the living flame of the Lord of the world. We are the seventh ray who have spoken to you now, balanced over this place, a giant figure eight that is in a number of dimension. And therefore it shall remain violet flame in seventh ray cycling from spirit to matter, matter to spirit. This is our gift on this occasion of your miraculous service in dealing with the labors of Hercules. Blessed one, we did wait with bated breath to see if there would be such a moment, a momentum, carried that much as last night would occur. It did occur, beloved heart, and we are extremely gratified. Know then that you have surely made all of heavens happy. And the Lord does love, and his laughter does echo across a cosmos. And the Lord does hold the non-entities and the enemies of light and derision. And more so, he does hold them in abeyance and bind them. And our beloved Portia say, may you continue for all your worth, for you are all worth your causal body, all that you are yet to be, and all that the cosmos can become, because you have kept the torch of liberty on planet Earth. And our beloved Portia says, I bow to the emergent light of the cosmic justice, and each and every one of you, keepers of the flame, as we give thanks for our beloved Portia, our beloved Saint Germain, and all the great host that have mastered their light and their wisdom, that have given us this teaching and this understanding that has made it as real today as it was in 1989. As that light and that blessing that has come forth, we ask that it continue to bless and heal and raise us as we can but continue to balance our scales in this hour. That as we continue to walk in that light, to continue to balance that 51% of our karma, we move with thee, O God, in thy presence. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. As we call forth 
the angels of the Eucharist to come forth and bless this bread and this wine. These elements of the Christ, let thy light, O God, be according to thy wisdom. Father, anoint each and every heart flame with thy presence. Anoint each and every heart flame as we go forth to do thy will. In Jesus' name, we thank thee. Amen, amen, amen.